Well, adding to those developments, the DA's Randall Williams have, has been re-elected at Swane Mayor without contest. It's after the ANC didn't participate in the election of office bearers. Well, for more on how these coalitions are being formed, we're joined by Wits School of Governance Senior Lecturer T.K. Boe and the Public Affairs Research Institute's Dr. T. Nanzo. Good evening to both of you and thank you so much for your time. A roller coaster 24 hours it has been, Dr. Nanzo. Let me begin with getting your own views and reflections. I suppose the question to ask is, what have you been watching uh, the most out of the developments? Of course, outside of the fact that um, some of these decisions or um, the voting has gone completely in a direction that has been unexpected. Thank you, Kathy, for that question. Good evening to you and your viewers. Well, in terms of my reflections for the past 24 hours, it has really been a political environment that has been very exciting, very tense, and we can see South Africa really exploring what we call local democracy at play here. And one of the critical things that have happened for, for the past 24 hours is that there has been a lot of political jostling, especially when it comes to um, the metropolitan areas that, in the Gauteng province. So yes, things were very much un unexpected, but obviously we could read the signs in between, particularly the signs coming from smaller parties, such as the EFF, who had actually found themselves, you know, um, considering that they had been offended by the ANC in terms of not really coming to the table when it came to their demands. And they really did find themselves even offended when the ANC actually didn't bring in their senior um, negotiators to have a conversation with the EFF. So at the end of the day, we can see that the EFF really played a hard ball in terms of its chess um, pawns when it came to winning the political battle um, and making the ANC really pay for what has happened um, with their negotiations. Hence, um, we had predicted at some point in time that there will be a change um, when it comes to the way in which um, their councillors would be voting for these um, mayoral positions. So there was a clear, significant indicator that things might change in this process. Uh, TK, your own reading of what the political strategy at play, particularly for organisations such as the EFF, Action SA and even the IFP might be because their positions in terms of any potential coalition agreements, especially where the ANC is concerned, has become even clearer over the last 24 hours. No, thanks for having me. I'll, I'll probably take a different tact. I've, I've not actually been paying attention that much, not because it's not interesting, but because, look, for me, the, the real battle is, is not how the coalitions are formed. For me, the biggest issue is going to be when the real crux of how local government works, when you talk about voting for budget, that for me is going to be the real crux of it. Because I think uh, most of the political parties, look, they, they stated the, their main ambition, which was, look, let's, let's sideline the ANC for worse or for better. For, so for me, that was not really uh, the primary focus. And I think for us, if anything, if you're studying narratives, uh, the key thing for me seems to be there's still a, a whole hang up on what the ANC is and what the ANC represents. And I think that's looking at it very much in the past. So it seems to me the political parties still don't know how to say to live outside the ANC. So for me, when we're going to really judge when these coalitions or, or and I, I think as our, as our fellow guest doctor says, whether local government or local gov or democracy works is when it comes to voting. Because I think what voting will show us is when it comes to the issues and the interests of citizens, do these political parties go back to what they know best, which is their ideology and what they're leading? Or they're going to be able to say, listen, for the betterment of the city of Tswane or city of Johannesburg, we are going to vote in such a way that the budget is reflected in that. That, for me, is going to be the bigger debate. How they coalesce, not really that interesting, because I think they sort of spoke beforehand. It was, let's keep the ANC out. Let's talk about what then the lack of agreements coming into some of these negotiations is going to mean for crucial um, council work that, that needs to get done, Dr. Nzo? 
Well, this will be interesting, um, Cathy, because when you get into a coalition agreement, it means that you have secured what we call a block vote when it comes to major decision making, particularly around decisions that have to do with the budgets. We know that metropolitan areas, they have an executive system where the mayor has um, the, the, the legislative authority in terms of overseeing the budget, in terms of implementing the budget, and in terms of pre presenting the budget to council. And there, without a majority government, it's going to be very difficult, you know, to get the support because now there is a likelihood that maybe the DA might choose to, to go on a process of running these um, city councils through minority budgets. But again, there will be another jostle in terms of securing that voter block of councillors who are going to support these, these uh, budgets. So in other words, there might be tensions, there might be conflicts, and again, this may mean that the DA would have to go back and try to co-opt you know, the different caucuses of the different political parties. And even not to forget that it's not just only caucuses of political parties, but there are ward councillors, independent councillors, who, who also manage to get um, a few wards in some, municipalities, in some municipalities. So then these kinds of um, political maneuverings will be very interesting um, moving forward. And the, the problem is that, you know, once you have... Um, 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 and the political uh, coalition amongst political parties, there is better predictability in terms of securing that voter block. But when you do not have these agreements, then there is more unpredictability and the likelihood of really getting more instability creeping in into the governance processes um, of council. So yes, um, just like what uh, Buri said, that it will be a very interesting time to see how um, the, the management and the governance system when it comes to the council and its committees and its executive will really pan out when it comes to major decision making, mm -hmm. such as budgeting, passing of bylaws and policies and etc. Uh, TK, do you see a situation where parties like the DA are forced to move a bit further in terms of some of the hardline positions that they have taken about uh, around who they will and won't work with in order to secure the stability of these governments because the reality is they've also entered what is uncharted territory. It is an unprecedented moment to have the DA in democratic South Africa having as many mayors as they do in the Gauteng metropolitan areas. Uh, it, it's a, I'll answer it in a South African way. It's a yes and no. Yes, it, it, in uh, the, the optics of it, yes, of having mayors. But I always want uh, maybe a, our viewers to remember, they did not win the municipalities. They won it via a coalition, which put, brings in a different dimension altogether. And if we seem to remember what history teaches us about the DA, they went into such an arrangement in the city of Joburg, and that really led to the whole redesigning or maybe even the reintroduction of uh, Miss Helen Zilla. Because what they found is that their voters were not happy with the arrangement where, they, where their person, their mayor, in the form of uh, Mr. Herman Mashaba, was seen as being too close to the EFF. So the question is going to be, are they going to go down the same route again, which is, as you asked, are they going to be able to say, listen, for the betterment of the city, we sort of have to play with everybody in the sand pit? Or are they going to actually listen to what their voters have previously told them, which is to say, there is a D DA way of doing things, and this is how we're going to do it. If they do that, remembering they did not win the municipality, but it's a, it's a coalition, or it's an on and off coalition, because I think like uh, Dr. Zoe says, we have not really seen the papers, the, the marriage papers and what they look like. So for me, that's going to be very interesting to say, are they going to go back to what their voters want, or are they going to be able to chart the new water? And if there's anything we know about how uh, Ms. Villa, because I think we can kind of say she is the paramount chief of the DA work, she is reticent to always apologize and go back. So I foresee we're going to have more of these types of conversations going forward. You, you know, you mentioned something important there, uh, TK, because you say we haven't seen these uh, coalition mm -hmm. agreements. The reality is that as it stands, they don't seem to exist. And that's part of the difficulty of this moment and why there's so many questions about whether or not it's a situation that will be very short lived. Uh, yes, and I think this is the point where, if I'm trying to remember my quotes and my history correctly, but I think I think it was one a British Prime Minister who said things about coalitions are it, it's not a fair representation of reality. 
it, I came, you came, we're, forced, we're both forced to be into this thing. So what really makes it a workable situation is what do the papers say? And look, none of these political parties have really wanted to show us what the paper is going to look like, because I think that would maybe require some level of A, leadership, and some level B, and I think Dr. Zot touched on it, maturity. And I think there's, look, and as much as we've always looked at and analyzed at the weaknesses of the ANC, I think we're about to see front and center why, why I think opposition political parties have not always been ready to come to the fore. So for me, it should not surprise us, because I think this is how coalition politics tends to work out in South Africa. It's, it's not a coalition of the willing. It's not a coalition of leadership. It's more, let's get rid of the ANC. And for me, that cannot be the narrative of how you govern, simply to get rid of somebody else mm -hmm. in this relationship. Uh, Dr. Nzo, let's talk a little bit about these coalitions, because one of the criticisms that has um, you know, been leveled against just how our system uh, has been operating post the 2016 elections, where we saw those initial establishments of, of coalition governments, at least to the kind of extent that they existed, is that they didn't seem to be any clear framework that governs these relationships. Are you expecting that that is going to change this time around? Because, yes, we have the, constit uh, the constituting of these councils, but we still don't have any clarity around what the rules of engagements between these parties are, what are the trade-offs between these parties, what are the demands that are being put on the table. Much of what happens is really hearsay and much of it is also driven by what political parties want you to hear um that's a very interesting uh, question for for you to ask kathy because you know i would have expected that since 2016 you know um state entities such as the south african local government association um, which is a representative body of, of local government, would have actually started to devise, you know, some form of framework that could have been, you know, proposed, um, you know, to Parliament in terms of how we can actually move on when it comes to um, the local government elections, when, it, when we end up with a situation of having um, no overall majority win in these different councils. And we, you know, right now, one would have expected that at least some sort of guiding framework, you know, for example, like um, the, the, the document that they have on, you know, councillor induction um, should have been, you know, developed by now. And it's something that is of greater urgency because right now we found ourselves, you know, in this quagma where there's so much uncertainty in terms of what kind of governance practices should we adopt because at the end of the day we are still a young democracy unlike western democracies that have been experiencing you know these kinds of formations in their local um, governance system so yes we desperately need to get a framework that must be developed to guide us in terms of how do we move forward when we find ourselves in a non-majority um, council where there is no overwhelming majority that has been won by, by particular political parties. And again, that framework should also stipulate the fact that in order for coalitions to come together, there needs to be strong foundations, strong principles, you know, and strong trust elements that needs to be brought forward that obviously do take time to get together. So yes, we definitely need um, some public urgency around um, the, that kind of framework. Dr. Tinan Zhou from the Public Affairs Research Institute and TK Bowe from the Witt School of Governance. That's where we leave it for tonight. Thank you for your time.